Hey guys, so today I'm going to explain to you how I made my hand-drawn effect, as you just saw, or if you saw one of my program, it says take-out videos. So all it is just a, is a post-processing material. So let's get started. So let's make our material, pp underscore drawing effect, and let us make our instance. Now let's attach that to our post-processing volume. Also make sure your volume set to unbound. Oh wait, is it reference? Okay, let's get started on our material. So two prerequisites. First has to be a post processing material in the domain and set it to before tone mapping which stops some awkward jittering which would happen if you if you left after tone mapping on which you could always try for yourself okay so let's start with the actual outlines so first we need to get the center of the object so we'll get the scene depth oh wait as uh, from the scene texture we need to get the scene depth uh, i just missed and We'll have to subtract the color um, from the direction we want to from the direction we want to draw the our outline from because this will be the center of the object. So we'll start with let's get another scene depth and we'll get our let's get a uh, two vector. So we'll start with our. Let's, yeah, let's just start with the right side. So it'll be one, zero. So we have to first multiply the inverse size by our coordinate. Then we add this to our texture coordinate. Extra coordinate and then and then plug this into the UVs of our scene depth so let's get another scene texture and scene depth and then we'll subtract this from the center of the object so grab the color and subtract so let's plug this into a massive color and have a look. So right, okay, this is a bit too violent for my liking. So let's actually clamp that. Cool, so we've got, we're starting to get a bit of an outline on the, on our left, or otherwise the object's right side. So we'll do the same thing for the left and top and bottom. So if I were to copy and paste this down here and for l the left side, we'll switch this to negative one. So, and we'll add our, we'll add the, fin the final number and let's add that to the clamp. And as you can see, we now have outlines on the sides. However, as a programmer, I love functions and I kind of want to clean this up a bit. So I will quickly add these all to a function. Oh. So all I've done is now I've got the left, right, Sorry, I right, left, top, and bottom coordinates and added them all together so I can get an, a full outline. Okay, now I'll open up this my function and you can just you can just pause here and copy it if you like. It all it does is take an input um, uh, input vector of two. Oh yeah, you can ignore the masks. Okay, cool. Now I'll go back to the actual material. So let me just comment this all quickly.
Okay, now uh, we'll now let's add two more variables to this. So one for um, so one of them will right, yeah. So one of them will be our line depth, and the other will be our power. So actually, wait, I messed that up. Power. So we'll first plug. Let's just plug in our power and let's plug in a multiply node here. So we'll multiply all the lines by the factor we want to times it by. So how, just how much depth or weight we want to add into our lines. Let's just give this a value of 20 for now. And power, let's just give it a default of two. And yep. So let's have a look. However, as you can see, like the inside of the objects are black, while we have a white, a nice white outline. The truth is I want to reverse this effect. So what I do, so what I did was this. If you click on power and make this a negative value, it inverts the effect into a nice line like this. Actual so you're starting to get you're starting to see our drawing effect a bit. Actually, let's just increase the line depth a bit more. Okay, now I've just done finished all my comments and stuff. So now let's actually add some color to this. So all we need first is a multiply node. This. And let's add our color. So let's just call this sh shading shading color and oh right first thing you add a mask to this component and make it RGB and now let's just quickly put this here so we can see the effect here and I'll give it a color of Let's go somewhere between white and so if you're just looking just to make a drawing effect you can just stop here and just keep experimenting um, with these values until you find a number that you like. Okay now I'll just show you how to how I actually got the effect of trans of the transition effect. So first Let's just start, let me space things out a bit. And now, I'll make a lerp. And another scene texture. Which has a post processing input zero. Add the color as B. Oh wait, never mind. Yep, I need um, I need to mask this. That's what I forgot. So if we play with the alpha. And we make it one. This no, it takes B. And let's just make it 0.5. It just takes half and half. Zero will just be as expected. Just the effect. So now I'll work on the actual transition effect. Uh, so let's start. Actually, first let's make a material parameter collection, which. I have already done here. First, you you'll need one scalar value, uh, one scalar parameter of let's just call it radius, and one vector parameter of position or location, whichever you prefer. 
or wh whatever name you actually want to be honest and now let's use these values so first we need a sphere mask and we'll get our absolute we'll get our absolute world position and use that as our a value b will be our position from our collection parameter so I'll call that position and we'll need to get get, a, get the RGB mask off it ignore the last value there and now we'll get our radius and we will multiply that by another let's buy another parameter called radius ah oh, trust me you'll you'll need this a lot later on like close to the end of the video so we'll just I'm just doing it now so I wanted to go back and make it let's just give this a default of 10,000 and a hard and a hardness I, I was just like going for two, to be honest. Now, let me... Now, for testing purposes, I will use... I will, I'll only use radius, and I'll use our camera position rather than this position which we'll set up later. So if we wanted that effect to trend to work with between the drawing effect and uh, and the realistic effect or default, we'd plug this into our, into the alpha of our lerp and plug this into this. Move this here, and we can see our value. Now let's get now. If you want, you can just play with the radius and see what happens. Here and there. So let's just set this back to our default of 10,000. And now I'll set up the blueprints. And actually, first, let me just plug these values back in. Okay, so this is pretty much the um, function I made. So first we'll set our position by the actor's location, which we'll get here. Then I made, made, a, de made a boolean, which is defaulted to false. Which, so if the world isn't drawing, then, it's, then it sets it to is drawing and starts drawing the world from, um, from our timeline, which will expand our radius. Otherwise, if, if pretty, so if you want to, if you want to undraw the if you want to get rid of the drawing effect, you pretty and it's and it's already set to drawing, it'll pretty much do everything but in reverse. So let's make our timeline. So let's add a float. Let's just make this four seconds. So let's zero zero, and let's make another one of four and one. Let's just make an let's just make a nice curve. And yeah, that should do it. So we plug in our radius in into our radius, and yep, that should pretty much be the whole bl blueprint effect. So if we spawn our character in and hit F, it pretty much starts to draw the world. It's a, it pretty much tries to make the world back to what it is. If I undo the, if I press F again, it pretty much draws the brings back our drawing effect however as you can see the problem is that the edges will always remain 
remain um, hand drawn. So to fix that, we'll now use that radius parameter which I told you to keep. So wait, actually first let me comment this. Okay. So now let's fix it all up to get so let's actually make our make the sky face. So you all we need is another lerp, which will set the B will be the same as this. Which eh, just make things neater. And the alpha will be set to our radius. If we hit OK. And let's hit F. You can see pretty much the whole world is undone. Now let's hit F again and we'll bring back our hand drawn effect. And yeah, so that should, that's pretty much it. So the reason I pretty much need the radius here is because this, the second loop is for the whole world rather than just only being, well, this one's only restricted to pretty much the, the size of the uh, sphere mask. So this pretty much undoes everything else, which is outside the sphere mask or inside and pretty much does everything. So let me just comment. And yeah, I hope you enjoyed that tutorial.